Hey guys, in this video I'm checking out a brand new lens from Makey. They were generous enough to send it out for review. This is the Makey 50mm full frame f1.7 manual focus prime lens. And it looks pretty cool, at least on the box. Let's check out how it comes packaged. Here is the box that the lens comes in. As you can see, Makey packaging uh, 50 millimeter f1.7 multi-coated and a nice picture of the lens on the front. Uh, just same thing, standard fixed focus lens for mirrorless cameras. This is for Sony E-mount. Another picture on the back and then some specifications on the side. Let's open this thing up. All right, so some foam padding. You get a rain jacket material little pouch, a guarantee card, little microfiber cloth, a lens hood, and the lens itself. And here is the lens. So pretty nice and heavy. I have to say all metal construction. This thing looks great. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the Makey 35 f1.7, um, just the way that it's built. And let's see. So right here we have Makey 50 f1.7. You have a giant focus ring. It is stiff but smooth. So it does take quite a bit of torque. And you can see that that barrel extends in and out. We'll see if there's a ton of focus breathing as a result. And the aperture is on the front, declicked, goes from f1.7 to f8, and then basically instantly to f22. That's pretty crazy. Um, you can see the aperture blades open and close. Around the back, metal mount, a giant piece of glass on the inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, no electronic connections. Obviously, this is a manual lens. So manual focus only on the front, Makey multi-coated 51.7 and 52 millimeter filter thread. So this thing looks awesome. I like the design. I know that I talked about the fact that the um, Seven Artisans lens that I just tested, the 55 millimeter, similar design has the aperture um, at the very front and then the focus ring here. Both of these rings are pretty stiff. They're almost equally as stiff um, the aperture is slightly more stiff or harder to turn, but they're both pretty tough to turn. So excited to put this on the camera and see what the results look like. So here is the lens once again up close. As you can see, I like the red ring around the front. I think that's a nice feature. It looks pretty sleek and it seems to be very well built. It seems very heavy and metal in construction. The rear is just a giant cutout for that full frame Sony sensor. But here is what it looks like on my A6000. So there it is. It looks quite nice, I have to say. You can see the aperture blades on the front through the glass. It matches quite nicely and it's not too big. It's about the size of the Sony 35 millimeter for reference. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out some sample photos and videos using this lens on my A6500. Here we go. All right, so as you guys can tell, video is not this lens's strong suit. At 50 millimeters, it's pretty tough to get a handheld steady shot, even with built-in stabilization on the A6500, which was on for that video, believe it or not. 
So overall, this lens was fairly easy to use. I will say that it is always a readjustment to try to switch from focus to aperture front to back. It's just something that you have to get used to having the aperture up front and the focus in the back. On occasion, when I was taking those sample photos, I was changing the aperture instead of the focus, simply because when you pick up the camera and the lens, your hand kind of naturally rests closer to the front of the lens versus towards the middle of the body of the lens, but it's a small gripe. Overall, the focusing experience was pretty good. You have a decent range. I wanna say it's almost a half turn. It's a little bit less than that. The focus ring is very stiff, however, so it's something that you have to get used to. I'm comparing this to the Rokin on 21 millimeter, which just has a super lightweight feather focus ring, which is buttery smooth and very easy to use. This one is quite stiff, which is good because it probably won't change focus on accident. You won't bump into it. But from the standpoint of trying to focus quickly, you do have a little bit of a delay simply because it takes a little bit more force. Because this is a 50 millimeter lens on an APS-C sensor, it's really closer to 80 or 85 millimeters, which wide open at f 1.7 does make it pretty difficult to nail down focus because the focal plane is very thin. Um, so it was difficult at moments to get the exact precise focus on this lens. However, what I did was I programmed the C1 button to do zoom into focus, so I was quickly able to zoom in on the shot, make sure that my focus was accurate, and then press the shutter and take the shot. So that certainly does help. Overall, image quality seems very good, at least in the center of the image where I was able to zoom in and check it out. On the edges, it does get a little bit softer, and I was curious to see how this lens compared to the Seven Artisans 55mm f1.4 lens that I reviewed maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, both of those lenses, in fact, I have it right here. Both of these lenses are about the same price. Um, actually, the Seven Artisans is $10 cheaper than the Makey lens, and they are about the same size. One is a little bit narrower and slightly longer. Um, they're obviously both very fast, f1.7 versus f1.4, and the focal length is 50 millimeters versus 55 millimeters. So I took both of these lenses out and I shot two sample photos at f8 using my a6500. And here is what I saw. As you could tell in the center, both lenses look very sharp and they look just as good as the other. However, as you start moving into the corners, what I noticed is that the Makey started to get a little bit soft. And if you compare that to the corners on the Seven Artisans lens, you can see that they are still decently sharp. And that applies to both left and right side and the edges as well. So a little bit disappointing in a side-by-side -side comparison um, for the Makey lens, but the one advantage that this lens has over the Seven Artisans is that this is an APS-C only lens, whereas with the Makey, you could use this on your full-frame Sony cameras. Now, if you tried to do the exact same thing with the Seven Artisans lens, you will get a whole bunch of vignetting, which does not look great unless you're trying to go artsy with your photography. Now, as far as focus breathing, the Makey lens does exhibit a fair amount of focus breathing when using the manual focus, because as you use it in and out, you can see that the front barrel does expand and collapse back into the lens. Now the same thing happens with the Seven Artisans lens and you see focus breathing with this lens as well. Now as far as corner sharpness, if you are using this lens for outdoor portraits and you're shooting it wide open at f1.7, you're probably not gonna care that the corners of your pictures are a little bit more soft. Uh, in fact, that's the effect that you're probably going for. But if you have an APS-C camera, so an A6000, A63, or A6500, and you're looking for a manual focus portrait lens that's sharp in the center and the corners, I would skip this one and go for the Seven Artisans, and it's $10 cheaper at that. So that is really going to be it for this review of this lens. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Let me know what you guys thought of the results and what you guys think of this lens. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of the likes, comments, and support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.